Okay. Here we are back on the internet. We were just making fun of Preet. Should there be 18-year term limits for the Supreme Court? Yes, some people have mentioned that. I would say yes, because Trump got two picks in a year and a half. Jimmy Carter never got one. Got it's, zero, that's true. Yeah, it's, it's, it's... Nixon got four, Reagan got four. Yes. Um, look, so I, I, think, I think there's a reasonable case to be made for it. I think you want to have judicial independence, which the founders thought could be accomplished through having life tenure, but I think they also probably thought that over time, the people in the Supreme Court would sort of match, again, over a long period of time, um, the ideological proclivities of the party that was appointing them but if you look back at a stat that people don't focus on, <clears throat> if you go back to 1968, 50, in the last 50, 50 years, and if you count the new nominee, there will have been 18 people appointed to the Supreme Court. Do you know how many of them were appointed by Republican presidents? 14 of the 18. So it's over 80. In including four from two presidents who did not win the popular vote. Correct. So because of the there vagaries... There should be eight liberals on the court. Well, but, but the reason why people haven't freaked out more than they might have is because in, you know, yesteryear, there were times when a president like Gerald Ford would appoint someone like John Paul Stevens, who ended up not being as ideologically pure and, and right-wing as some of the people you have now. That, that problem has been solved by the right in various ways, but it is interesting to see how lopsided it has been, even though Democrats have been in office for, you know, a much different percentage of the time than the 14 to 18 would, would suggest. Well, you know where the founders screwed up? They didn't know that we would stop smoking so that they, they didn't think that people would be living into eight, their 80s and 90s, you know? If, if we were still a smoking country, we wouldn't have to worry about term limits. We wouldn't have a country run by people who are all like 88, 89 years old and still going. So you're saying America was never really that great. Is that what you're saying about the founders? They were... They were... <laughs> They were lousy, too? Yeah. Oh, boy, this is a rough day for America. <laughs> okay, uh, Charlie, are you going to join other principled conservatives and vote for Democrats in the midterm? I would prefer to vote for sane, rational Republicans. I just too late. I can't find them. <laughs> I, 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 right. But let me know. I mean, don't don't but... tell me you're going to write in, you know, the Pope or, you know, Reagan. Or, you know, that's just a chicken. Well, well it definitely won't be the Pope. No, no. You're mad at them now. No, right? Yeah, you. Yeah. Um, but no, you're not going to vote Democratic. You know, I mean, I, well, well, it's it, only two sides. It's, I keep, well, you gotta, okay, we got to pick a side. Race yeah. by race, and I do think that America needs to have like two not crazy parties, and I do think that if principal conservatives all abandon the Republican Party, you're going to leave it to the you know the the swamp lizards and the and, and the crackpots and the and the Trumpists. But as of right now, I don't see any. Um, any, any constituency for Republicans who are going to stand up against uh, Donald Trump. And I do think this election is going to be a referendum on constitutional what about uh, the, democracy. What about the next presidential election? Yeah. I mean, John Kasich looks like yeah. he's making some moves. I mean, yeah. Mitt Romney, if he could find right. his spine consist yeah. consistently, he could be, you know... Sure. Uh, do you think there will be a challenge from the uh, Republican classic wing of the party? Yeah, there will be a challenge and it will fail because the, the, the party has basically it, become, as, as Jonathan was saying, has become kind of cultic. We I don't saw care this if it's, movie. Yeah. We saw yeah, it. Right. Wait, wait, tried. Right. Yeah. Wait, wait a second. Right. It, it won't fail no. if it saps enough votes right. away to elect the Democrat, right. then it will succeed. Right. Well, and that's why they will, should do it. it, it will, I'm not saying John Kasich will win the election, okay. but if he runs as a third party candidate. Right. Third, third party candidate will be interesting, but then again, I mean, don't, don't underestimate that Donald Trump could be reelected. Oh, I don't. If, if, you know, I mean, never underestimate the capacity uh, of the Democrats to blow this. Oh, I'm the guy who says he's yeah, not I leaving know. even yeah. if he loses the election. No. So. Yeah. Uh, not really funny, but okay. Um, <laughs> Jennifer, how important is the election of women to the success of the Democratic Party? Boy, talk about it. You take that yeah, card yeah. on there. You'll I never know. get a more a softball <laughs> right is, down the middle of the plate there. That, that, that's... <laughs> that <in. It's> <laughs> Let me groove one. Say they're not right. important. Give us the yeah. one. Be provocative. About why they're not I'm important? Not no, no, <laughs> <laughs> no and, and we're going to see... I mean, we have seen these incredible numbers for, for those of you who have been watching this. Women are killing it. Um, women are killing it both in winning Right. when they've raised their hands and in raising their hands to right. run, which is great. Right. There's this great, um, just quickly, there's a great stat that comes out of Emily's list where in the midterms last cycle, last time, they had about 900 women who had raised their hands to say they wanted Emily's list help. In this cycle, 
40,000 women have raised their hands to say in some way, shape, or form they want to run for an office, you know, which is no, I mean, fantastic. between Stormy Daniels and Omarosa and <laughs> pussy-grabbing tape and women, I think it is women who are going to wind up women. taking down We well, will, we will so, take care of this country. Uh, Just Melania. put us in office. Melania. Melania could be the keto at all. One of the smartest <clears throat> analysts of the elections, in, particularly in the House, is Dave Wasserman, who mm -hmm. works at Cook Political Report. And he called this year, he's, he's already called it, the year of the angry female college graduate. And that, I'll tell you, when you talk to Trump's political advisers, that is the constituency they fear most, because they already vote in huge numbers, and his approval rating among them is, I think, 26%, something like that. It's truly How many voted for him in 2016? I don't know what the college-educated women... Uh, he won white women, and he says, I won women. He, he actually means <laughs> white women. Uh, but I don't know what his numbers... They were actually but, not so bad. They were not but, so bad in 2016. Okay. And now he's underwater even with white women, just white women without college educated. So <clears throat> that's progress. Um, Preet, how has the Trump family gone so many years in New York City without facing major prosecution? Great question. I would love to know that. She gets the easy one. Yeah. He gets the... <laughs> My bad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no, no. That's what I got. That's all I got, Bill. Wow. No, that's not what we meant. That's what I got. You just wrote some headlines there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, because... Let's watch Jonathan Swan yeah. laugh some more. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, Adam, is it naive to believe that California's wildfires could be random, or are they truly due to man-made climate change? Oh, uh, that's a that's a softball question for me. They're absolutely due to man-made climate oh, change. Good. But but not not just that. Is it... Not just that. Here's what people don't realize. You would enter but... differently. You would have ruined you for me. <laughs> <laughs> Here, here's what people don't realize is that when natural disasters happen and people say, "Oh, it's an act of God," um, we really are the ones who make the natural disaster so destructive. In the case of fires, it's because we built. We're we're doing this on this show uh, coming this year. Uh, it's uh, because we build homes so far out in the wilderness that now we extinguish every single fire that happens, right? But those are like, you know, forests need a certain amount of fire, you know, like small fires every sure. year to clean out the deadwood. When you extinguish every fire because, oh my God, now people are, the suburbs have encroached out into the forest, right. then the deadwood builds up, and then when the fire does come, it's a real motherfucker. And... <laughs> That's what right. we're seeing. That's what we're seeing right now. I mean, it's impossible to live in California and not realize that climate change is real and that we live in a man-made landscape that is crumbling under its own weight. It's really astonishing. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Have a nice weekend. All right. Thank you very much.